Dietmar Zersdorfer, Middle East Managing Director at Siemens Energy. Thank you for joining us at Economy Middle East. It's a pleasure to be with you. What specific actions is Siemens Energy taking at COP28? Could you tell us more about your participation? First of all, we are very happy that we are here in the middle of the green zone with our new offices. We just uh, moved in here end of August and it's the host uh, hosting uh, roughly 700 employees. And we have uh, done over the last week uh, since COP started a lot of actions. We had, first of all, on Saturday, we had a meeting with the Energy Resilience Leadership Group, which has been founded uh, at the Munich Security Conference with uh, Maros Sefcovic and Bill Gates, which was discussing how do we take innovations into the energy space to drive the energy transition. We had the Munich Security Conference uh, Board, which uh, we convened here also and was discussed with leaders how do we transform the energy industry. We had a session of um, leaders that came in where we discussed with German and uh, Middle East politicians how can we drive the energy transition here in the region. So there was a lot of action which we did. We had, uh, I think, a prime event was also the Alliance for Industry Decarbonization where we brought 60 CEOs from around the world uh, here to Dubai. They uh, had a discussion, a CEO round table, and we discussed what can companies contribute to the energy transition. And there was a pledge they made, all the companies together, that they will uh, invest more than 50 billion to reduce the carbon emissions with their companies uh, uh, um, emit uh, by 2030 uh, by 50%. So I think we have a lot of actions where we are working on and where we are really transforming the energy industry. Very interesting uh, activations. And what role does the Middle East play in the energy transition? I mean, the energy transition is, is key here in the Middle East because the Middle East can play a vital role because they supply the energy to the world today, to many parts, and they can also play in the future with green energy. There is a lot of initiatives ongoing in the countries where they look how they can deploy green hydrogen and products uh, to other parts of the world, Asia and Europe and others. Uh, we see all the activities where the country is itself committed to, to reduce CO2 emissions. In the forefront, Saudi Arabia and the UAE, which have 50% Saudi Arabia and 44% the UAE committed by 2050. So I think there is a lot of actions where the countries are really driving these actions into their own economies, but also look how they can help the world because we have abundant renewable energy here in the region uh, that we really help the world also to use uh, the renewable energy. Beyond renewable energy sources, what are the emerging and disruptive technologies that have the potential to accelerate the energy transition and drive down emissions? First of all, I would say that hydrogen has a huge potential to be a disruptive technology. We are at the beginning of the hydrogen economy. Many countries are working on it. We see big projects happening in Saudi Arabia, uh, in Oman, but also here in the UAE. And this is something that will really drive forward and uh, will make also the region, again, the green energy supplier for other regions in the world in the future. We also see disruptive technologies in AI. This is very much emerging. Everybody is talking about it. But to give you a concrete example what it means, we have here in Dubai with uh, Dubai Electricity and Water Authority, we have uh, plants which are running and we applied AI technology to the turbines there. And this reduced the fuel consumption by 4% and also drastically the emissions. And I think this is the technologies that we all have to deploy to make today's existing infrastructure more efficient and in the future then also deploy these technologies right from the beginning when the plants are newly built. Uh, so we see a lot of activities there, here in the region, which help the world again to transform. And what concrete outcome would you expect from COP28? I would hope for that the world really unites, that we come to a pledge which says we step out of fossil industries uh, and we will use renewables and the technologies of the future. But this will take time and that is, I think, what we have to agree upon, what is the timeline, because it is a transition. It is not something that happens overnight. It's not something that you can force by just saying it. <clears throat> it's really something where we need to all unite, work towards the same goal, and then also identify in which status it's which economy and uh, give them also the chance to participate in this transformation that we are doing. That would be a real concrete outcome. So far, we have seen very good pledges. We have seen that uh, um, uh, the country step up for increasing the renewables. We have seen that nuclear technology plays potentially a role in the, in the future again. Many countries pledged for that. We have seen that money comes to the table because financing is very important. The energy transition will cost us 
till 2050, 150 trillion US dollar. That's a number, it's unimaginable uh, when you write it down how many zeros you have in this. And that's something where we have to work on to get this all done. And I believe this COP can make a difference towards that goal. Great, thank you for your time.